Okay, uh, so good morning, Year 13. So first of all, uh, a little message from me. So this is me filming uh, in the classroom. It's about 10 to 6 on uh, Thursday. So I've received information this afternoon that one of my housemates is um, ill. So uh, she thinks she might potentially have uh, something you know, which seems a bit like uh, coronavirus. So therefore, I have to go into lockdown for 14 days. Uh, so I thought I'd send you this uh, video of the lesson that we were going to do tomorrow. <clears throat> also, I'm going to try and Skype in, so hopefully I've already done that with the Teams thing uh, with Ms. Beatty. So, today's lesson, artificial selection. Now, the first thing you should do is you should watch this video link here um, about artificial selection. It's a fascinating video about um, kind of super cows. It's a National Geographic video. I'll put the link uh, in the description of the video, and it's also in the PowerPoint, which hopes that you've accessed on VLE. Once you've done that, come back and write down these three definitions for artificial selection, inbreeding depression, and hybrid vigor. Pause the video, watch that video, and come back. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, super cow, uh, very, very um, selectively bred cow, lots of muscle, uh, and you saw the process of choosing which animals to breed over generations and generations. So artificial selection, what is it? Well, here's the definition from the textbook. It's the selective breeding of organisms and involves humans choosing the desired phenotypes and interbreeding those phenotypes individually, therefore selecting the genotypes that contribute to the next generation, the next gene pool. Now with artificial selection, there, there is some, uh, some things that happen which is sort of negative. And we have something called inbreeding depression, which is when we have a decreased vigor in terms of the growth, survival, and fertility, looks like I typed that twice, uh, it is quite late, after generations of inbreeding. Uh, and then we've got hybrid vigor, which is increased heterozygosity, giving increased vigor of fertility, growth, and survival. It's also called heterosis. So what does that mean, heterozygosity? That means that basically, if for every single gene locus you are homozygous, then Overall, if you're very homozygous across your whole genome, it gives you decreased vigor. Whereas if across the genome you have you know, more diverse alleles, so heterozygous here at this locus and heterozygous here at this locus, then it basically means that you grow better. You're sort of a fitter animal, I suppose. Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper. So artificial selection, I think you know the process, but you start with a population of say, let's say tomato plants, which show variation. Uh, and breeders choose the plants to interbreed that have the desirable characteristics. The offspring with the most desirable characteristics are then allowed to interbreed and so on. You have to repeat this for generations and generations. And eventually when you do that, you'll get uh, a change. So here's an image just sort of trying to show you that, you know, the wild type of tomato way back in uh, I don't know, ancestral times, you know, was not as nice and big and as pretty as the tomatoes we have now. And we've actually produced a huge different variety of tomatoes through selective breeding. Just like we breed um, wolves and have changed them into dogs of different varieties, it's the same thing with tomatoes. And actually it's been done with many, many organisms. Um, so here's the table from your textbook, which shows um, all the organisms, both plants and animals, uh, and the characteristics that we've looked for. I'll just pick out one, an one animal and one plant. So for example, um, for a cereal, wheat, we've looked at um, increased yield, shorter maturation time, and uh, resistance to pests. And then for poultry, let's say chickens, we've looked at um, maybe the mass of the meat and the feathers. And we've also looked at the growth rate. The type of chicken that is kind of intensively reared is called a broiler chicken. Uh, and it's extremely intensively reared to put on uh, a lot of mass in a lot of, so in a short time. Uh, and it really can't actually survive beyond its kind of... Um, scheduled time for slaughter. So we really have changed these animals. Okay, so moving on to your main task of sort of some note taking from your textbook page. Um, in just a second. Uh, is, uh, sorry, it's on the next slide. So this slide is all about uh, just looking at inbreeding. Okay, so inbreeding is when closely related animals uh, breed together uh, and it causes increased homozygosity and can lead to decreased vigor. So the notes that you need to take, first of all, make notes on two animals and two plants that have been under artificial selection. What are we looking for? Then I'd like you to explain the terms inbreeding depression in a bit more detail and also hybrid vigor. 
So here's a picture of um, hybrid vigor. So this plant here is a pure breeding strain, and this plant here is a pure breeding strain, and this here is the hybrid in the middle. So this is kind of an inbred strain of corn, this is an inbred strain of corn, and this in the middle is the hybrid, uh, which is increased heterozygosity, and it grows a lot more vigorously. And then there's the sort of the cobs there, the corn from the plant. Uh, next thing, I'd like you to explain the use of gene banks and why plant breeders have use for them. So here's a picture of a gene bank I found, I think this is supposed to be in Russia, uh, and I think this is the Russian berry gene bank or something like that. So it has little tiny copies of lots of different berry plants um, for use in breeding. So we might want to create a new type of berry, but I don't know, like crossing a blueberry with a, with a raspberry, is that possible? Maybe. Um, or just to increase the genetic biodiversity within the berries. Finally, I'd like you to explain what are the ethical considerations around selective breeding, especially to do with purebred dogs. And I've got a video link here, which you should watch, it's about four or five minutes long, kind of a sort of humorous video, but has a lot of good science about purebred drugs. It's called, it's called The Truth About Purebred Drugs, Dogs, sorry. Uh, and I'll put the link in the video, or you can just try and find that, the bizarre truth about purebred dogs. So watch that video, make those notes, watch that video, and then come back to this. Okay, right, now it's time to do these questions. Questions on page two and nine. Uh, work through them as best as you can. So pause the video, answer the questions first, uh, and then we can move on using the PowerPoint of this video to look at the mark scheme. Okay, moving on. Done the questions? You really done? Okay. All right, so here are the answers. Uh, use these uh, answers here to self-assess your work, see how you've done, make sure to include any extra detail or any keywords there that you haven't done so in your answer. Uh, and once you've done that, you can move on to these two multiple choice quizzes. Now I can't really get them to work unfortunately on my computer, because um, I have a Mac and I don't think the, the animations work, but you should be able to use do them on the VLE. Uh, so you can do this multiple choice quiz and then there's this sort of spelling quiz on inheritance. Um, once you've done that, there's another multiple choice quiz there. Uh, once you've done that, that's sort of the end of the lesson and you can then go on to the VLE and find um, the Doddle quiz that I've set you. So that Doddle quiz, so you go into Doddle and find the Doddle quiz and that quiz will uh, kind of sum up the unit on genetics. So kind of in, in essence, genetics, the whole thing, remember we've covered uh, Mendel, monohybrid crosses, dihybrid crosses, we've looked at linkage, sex linkage, autosomal linkage, um, then we've looked at relationships between alleles, so how they interact, so epistasis and sort of collaborative action. Uh, we've looked at chi-squared, how we can use that to see if what kind of pattern is going on, whether it is linkage or it, is, it isn't, and then we started to look at um, natural selection, speciation, and artificial selection, okay? So that's that unit done. Uh, and then we'll be moving on next week into the final unit, which is gene technologies. Really, really cutting edge stuff, very interesting stuff. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this quick little video uh, and I'll see you when I see you.